It's June 26, 2022. Um, few different things that I'm rolling over. Um, I was watching the West World um, for whatever code I need out of it. And then uh, it associated a Jimmy Fallon um, which I have, like, I don't know, like, there was some weird Hamptons, like, event that happened, but, like, you know, whatever, and whatever, 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 with that antiques guy, uh, that Nora knew, and something weird that happened in 2014-15, um, Sunday morning is on. Yeah, thanks. So, that happened. Uh, it turns out, uh, Chris Hemsworth is on it as well because it was a, attached with Eva Evan Evan something Woods and so it was attached because of Westworld via that way and then there was a message in there that went to Thiessen Thiessen which is yourself um, and then you have Thessalonian in the NIV in the four and whatever and whatever whatever between roman numerals and the numerics i'm stuck in so anyway so i'm and then there's this morning's local news which has this festival um and the festival has this food truck that's like a gator and taters or something chester which i don't really understand the chester i mean i lived in chester field and I was really, really happy down in Virginia. I mean, Virginia being like where the world looked like it was perfect, according as like especially as compared to New York being a hellhole. Um, so, um, so they're in this food truck with this black lab, um, and the man is serving the food, and it's like these nacho chips cheese sauce it's fried pickles bacon chili i mean like nothing i would eat like unless there was some whatever that we were proving a point of like yeah no i could be nice to humans but like i mean normally i wouldn't pick this stuff out um i don't encourage this behavior but whatever the man had a very interesting symbol on his inside forearm. Um, so that I watched. But the food choice reminded me in this rectangle about a workout video that was filmed and produced with Richard Simmons. Uh, it was called Sweat into the Oldies. Now, I had Jane Fonda also. Um, so there was a Jane Fonda workout tape. I know nothing about these people, but they were on the TV and they were only whatever they appeared to be in the television. If they misconducted themselves outside of the field from which I viewed them, I want no responsibility for any of their actions if they got whatever wrong within my life frame. So anyhow, so here we are in, I'm watching uh, this man in a food truck serving this concoction and going, oh my God, that looks absolutely horrid. Although I don't want to insult him either because that's his food business. And I'm sure there are others that absolutely love it. Um, but it just reminded me of the beginning of that video of like, I even remember like consciously thinking, I don't want to be stuck in that diner for my entire life. I just don't. It's not what I was built for, not what I was born for, but I don't know how to get out of this room because Lynn and Lou would go to work or on the weekends they'd do whatever it is that they were up to. And if it wasn't a day where I could go out and I had a soccer practice or a soccer game or after soccer, it would just be sit the rest of the day um, in boredom unless they felt good enough to like go visit somewhere. But 
for the most part, it's like these little bursts of exercise. And then like, I mean, it's, I, it's like living like a dog, but some people's dogs live better. So then I'm looking at, okay, so what Lou, okay. So I'm thinking, okay, so in the thematic of my life with these two people, um, that dragged me into this world, um, Lou subscribes to a magazine. His magazine is ideal living hundred best places and inside of it there's all like developmental planning like really nice white people things and I'm thinking to myself now how do these white people get to this architectural delight and function in time and space well I've been held captive in New York and they've done nothing to make my life easy like there's some people that participated in like a film thing which get awards and they live at some high shelf highborn place to communicate and send messages because there's this generational thing that really is whatever but then there's the star chosen and what I'm not quite sure at is why I'm stuck so horrifically in a chair having to witness this. Now, politically, Lin and Lou, they talk about stuff. I mean, since I was a kid, I'm like, wait, what's that word mean? Well, but what does that mean in actuality? Like, what are they saying? This is what it... Okay, so I found on the same Jimmy Fallon show that Chris is speaking... And I didn't get as far as the girl from the West World. I didn't get to her interview because you can't fast forward and I'm not wasting my time going through all this crap. So it's season nine, episode 160 for The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, which tapes in New York City, apparently. Um, I'm watching it. And like, this is what, like when Linda and Lou speak, they have a young man on speaking and Jimmy's supposed to guess what the young man is saying and this interaction is like I would be Jimmy Fallon looking at Linda and Lou and Linda and Lou are the ones with some word and trying to use other words to explain and build a language with me as to what happened during their life frame in the same area and this exact interaction is real it's like it just like does not compute it just i mean i hear it i definitely put forth the effort but for the most part i'm like you've left me empty as far as inheritance goes that's what it feels like so here's the reference of the episode. It's like lobster and it's, it's made into like a weird like mountain thing and you eat it and it's like you eat it in Maine and it's like lobster ass shrimp ass but it's not crab. Like, yeah, yeah, but it's put into like a weird kind of like a, a cup. A cup? Crab, cup, cup. That's what the adults that I, they're like throwing things at you. Then the TV throws things at you. Then the movies throw things at you. And you're like, whoa, I know I'm missing something here. Because none of you are adding up to anything that's real in your like ideal life before I arrived where some people made like millions of dollars and are living at some ideal level and I'm stuck in the bottom and like I've heard things like well you gotta put in the work yeah really well where's the work stupid I mean like there's no work where's the work platform in doing the work when everybody's living this ideal lifestyle now here's the other kicker Di Frio goes for 1975, goes for a job interview today. 
So he's like, oh my gosh, he's like, it's like, it's, it's this union job and it's with like Madison Square Garden security. Like it would be like ideal. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. So he's got a pair of pants on that are kind of cargo-ish in a dark gray. And then he has on a light gray shirt. And I'm like, t I was like, that's what you're wearing? And he's like, yeah, why? I was like, well, it looks like you slept in the shirt. I was like, I mean, don't you have other clothes? I mean, if this is a security position, I mean, like, in my, in my life frame, I'm thinking Michael Zapp. I'm like, no. I was like, you get, you put on a button down shirt, you put on pants, you put on a belt. You go like you're interviewing with the FBI and like you want to impress somebody. But Tia Frio is like in this pit and this hole. And he's, I'm like, it looks like a nightgown. In fact, the shirt is so poorly misshapen, you look like you have boobs. I was like, it just, it doesn't look right. I was like, why don't you change? And he's just like, no, no, no. He's like, I'll, I'll be fine. So then Lewis comes up and now, of course, it's my ideal father who had greater expectations for me than this shit that followed me in on my shoe. And I'm like, and now he's trying to criticize me for, I'm like, listen to me. We have a generation, generational gap problem here, along with my personal beliefs. I have like a double whammy problem when you bring this kid's name up. I was like, Teofrio was like a different level of human on Long Island that existed that was already in a hole with some GI Bill and some Korean War father who was already in a hole. And it was like somebody already removed the ladder. I was at the top of the hole, but it wasn't my, as a female, it wasn't my responsibility to put a ladder in and get him out. My responsibility was to stay at like Michael Zapp level and to do ballet and to point and he lifts. That's the classification that I grew up at and I expected based on what the humans and the adults presented me as an option in ideal living and management for future generations so I don't get stuck and thrown into the snake pit with other people's children who already were having a problem. Once I get pulled into the pit, I'm useless. So now it's a tachycardic wave hive tactical issue. And I've got people in the pit that don't understand. They want answers. They want whatever. And now it becomes a, a different fight I never even wanted to be in. I mean, it is so crystal clear, obvious. It's painful to live this way. So this is what's on the local news this morning. So this is CBS 2 Sunday morning news at 7 a.m. This piece that they're doing um, before it, to preface it, they had a weather map where they looked at the global space from an angle of South America looking towards the north with um, a focus on um, with a focus on the Caribbean islands of say Cuba, Puerto Rico as like a strategic brotherhood defense to not let Venezuela and Suriname and whatever else is down there enter water space and try to enter through Florida. I mean, like, Gulf War being whatever it is, Gulf of Mexico, what the heck's the difference? But they've failed to keep their obligation of keeping the whatever problem down in whatever area for the professionals to handle. And it's been creeping up dangerously. So I really hope ideal life is having a really great time in their baby boomer like planned obsolescence before they die. But you've really left us in a danger, more dangerous position than when you arrived. And I don't know like who's being real honest with anybody. Tempers being what they are.
So this is what it sounds like. This, by the way, this is, is the food Chester. truck first. Chester, Chester's Gators and Taters is named for Chester the Black Lab. Chester the Black Lab. Now, interestingly enough, um, this particular weatherman has a cameraman named Vince in Convinced, in Conspire, in Con Theory. Cameron runs and operates Chester's Gators and Tater, but he named it after his dear, beloved, late Black Lab. And I know, Cindy, you'd love that. So let's see. We're gonna. This is gonna drive Vince crazy. We're gonna go in. We're gonna come into Cameron's studio. Hey, watch that step there, Vince. Come on in. Hey, Cameron. Thank you so much. Good morning. Thank you, guys. First off, uh, the Gator. How does Gator sell? Gator sells awesome. It's a novelty everywhere we go, and it's our biggest seller, and that's our staple item on the bigger stand. Um, for me, Gator's number five. I just heard them reference in the Supreme Court. The magical number in Supreme Court is five. Great. Okay, so I have James Bonded 005 in the 20th century. That's my contribution to Zodiac Boat, for which my local representative from 1979 being the highest bar set of locals from the local area, and we share a northern boulevard between his residence and mine since, I don't know when, it's my senior year, his junior year. Um, and then, let's think about this. He set the bar as high as man in human category went as far as a suitor. Um, after him, it went crazy donkey and it went off rails in a snake pit where I've been stuck. And I really can't find any humans at like the level of what I, I still respect in like any kind of semblance. Today we're actually in our smaller stand going to come up with some fried stuff. All right, so you get to go ahead and, 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 and tell us what you're going to do. Here's the action. What are we making? So, uh, when I get in the wintertime when we're not working, because typically we work in the warmer months, when we're not working, I sit around and I come up with creations because I'm bored. This year we came up with a loaded fried pickle nacho. So we're going we're gonna to take a loaded nacho with chili, cheese, bacon, jalapenos, ranch, anything you want to put on it, and we're going to go a step further. Right. We're actually going to do fried pickles on top of the loaded nachos and then we're going to load it up even more so. great i can't wait so the lean into me gang of fitness and non-adipose tissue like distortion people that i wanted to belong to like my dream was belonging to that particular whatever theater or company that's where my bar is at setting a bar or setting a standard or setting something to shoot for in order to grapple with and have handle in order to hopefully achieve in the future although my future is starting to like really wither away at this point this at the beginning of that fitness video and not that it was, like, extremely champion-level, like, gymnast or ballerina style. It was, like, beginner-level or getting back into, in an organic way, with Richard Simmons. He wasn't, like, you know, Jack LaLanne or anything, but he also wasn't where my father was at the moment, which wouldn't even pick the video up and do it in the living room. But I used to spend time in the basement or the sub level of the high ranch and I would take it upon myself to come home from school and to do the video at least once a day to have some physical activity.
It's All right, load me up, so I'm a little bit of preparing. Okay. Morning, and this was the beginning like was them eating all this stuff right at a we'll diner. We've got nacho chips right here. So actually, before we even put these fried pickles on the nachos, we're gonna we're gonna load it up with cheese first. Sorry. Put a little back and forth, but we're gonna actually do cheese first on the nachos. And we're going to put a little chili on there as well. All right, full confession, I tried one of your fried pickles, and i got to tell you, when you do a fried pickle, it's the breading, and then as that wraps up, that spicy taste, you taste the pickle, right? It changes while you eat it. Oh, as far as Brady Bunch goes, let's just be really clear so nobody's ego gets a hold of them or they get twisted or tied up around meat. The bar that I have, the highest bar ever obtained my senior year, his junior year of like men like him do exist. He had his own Brady connection in Brady Bunch. I don't have like a method of other than knowing my son, Alexander, my number five told me that we shared a birthday with this superstar athlete named Brady who ha who shares our birthday. So my son Alex brought that to my attention. Yeah, it does. And we use a real high quality dill pickle. Um, so it's, it's the best one you can get. And the breading on it has a little bit of a kick. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so here is the pickles right there. We've got those. And we're going to put them right over top of the nachos. So I'm going to tell you, as a tiny guy, that's massive. So this is, I mean, this is a single serving, but it feeds how many people? Oh, gosh, it, it feeds probably four or five people easy. I mean, it's around three pounds of food. What do I do? How do I eat this? We're going to we're gonna load it up oh with my all gosh, the there's toppings. More. There's right. more. We're going to load going. it up with all the toppings. And then we're going to give everybody forks is how we do it. Oh. We're going to do more chili. And more cheese on top of there. I mean, everything's better with cheese. Cheese for sure. So you sandwich the pickles in between all the health food. All of that. And then I've got bacon. Now this is this is up to each person. So I mean, you know, we we can customize each order. But there's bacon on this. I never served my kids this level of food. It was fish and vegetables when we were in Ronkonkoma, and I had a scheduled routine. And while I myself was living off of shakes and bars, meaning a protein bar, uh, to be really crystal clear. Now, I'm going to rewind this for the geospatial geography map of what the weather was mentioning prior to this black lab mention in Taters, Gators, and Chesterfield in some East Rutherford, New Jersey. Now, I'm showing my youngest son this map, asking him what he thinks it means that here the arrows are going this way, but there's a distinct bar and all of the arrows are pointed this way while these are going in a different direction. Anthony, what was your answer? He didn't know. He has no idea. He's in fourth grade. And he has nobody to ask. Midday, even here in East Rutherford, before noon, likely some heavy rain. That holds together, interacts with the ocean, more available moisture, lift in the atmosphere, could see some flash flooding, and then that pushes through. Oh, sweet relief. Tuesday is going to be much more comfortable as high pressure builds in. Want to expand your horizon, give you a heads up on what could become Bonnie. Watching the X, 70%. Now, here's some symbols to the extreme south then there's this Trinidad and Tobago that's the area that in around 2000 to 2002 some influx of that very particular population hit the New York area hospitals to fill gaps in this profession called nursing. No idea who let them in because there was ample amount of girls my age 
trying to get into schools and trying to fill those positions, but they were almost, but, but I mean, I couldn't even get out of school before all the positions were filled. It's another barrier to entry that they've created in this area while they're playing these tactical and strategical, I don't know what, while ideal living is doing engineer things and multi-million dollar fund things and funding the problem. Trapping me in some pit with some white kid I don't really care about because I want to get back to the surface level so I can point and lift and actually enjoy maybe one decade of my life. Percent chance of intensification. And as we watch this head over, again, continued that straight line over the warm waters north of South America, we could see a developing storm. And that, again, would become Bonnie as we begin the tropical. I wouldn't qualify it as Bonnie. Not Bunny, not Bonnie, like, ugh. Now, here's a commercial that my son has access. It says, bring change to mind. Um, it is one of the kids that just arrived in these exorbitant quantities. And they're introducing this concept of mental disease to high school. As if it was some authority on something. Humans have been communicating for millions of years, from cave drawings, text messages, and even interpretive dance. My high school's multiple. I never saw a teacher move in this manner. Not once. Humans I went to the type of high school where you were told to sit from when the bell rang at 7, 8 a.m., whatever time it was, until the bell rang at the end of the day, releasing you from captivity and then sending you out into the larger or greater New York area. ...ways to communicate. And because almost half of teens have been affected by mental illness, we should be using every form of communication to break down stigmas and save lives. Um, here's the deal. I don't want that cursing my son and making my son feel that he has a mental disease. It's like pre-programming stigma and giving them some low bar to reach for as they have like some foot up the rear end, pushing them further into a pit that they won't be able to get out of because they think something's wrong with them. Something's wrong. It's just not with them individually. Now, back to this face of like, wait, what? What's going on? Uh, because I have this face I have to worry about. Who's like, mom, wait, wait, what's going on, mom? Yeah, no, mom's trying to handle it, alligator. Just give me a sec. A lobster ass shrimp ass has not crab? Crab? Yeah, yeah, but it's put into like a weird, kind of like a, a cup. A cup? Crab, crab. cup, cup, crab. Okay, so this for me has no like cryptic code other than the fact of like, none of it makes sense. Like it doesn't even, maybe cryptically if I wrote it down, I could decipher something. But for the conversation that I need to have to my upper room, or my upper reaches. He sent a message. I mean, again, court, the thesis, um, and then the Saved by the Bell and the Bayside High reference is important at my level. The school my sons currently go to, it's Bayside and it's on Bell. So it's saved by the bell at this particular juncture, not a ringing bell. Okay, so here's, I don't know, does this, do you call this joshing? 
for Joshua, or do you call this joking? Do you call this a spoof? I really don't know, because I don't speak the local jargon, considering the jarheads no longer look like something that I even recognize when I see them at Art Grand Army Plaza banging on drums and having a flea market, and what's attending in some freedom of slavery day. I'm like, are there, is that, is that the only thing that the army recognize? I mean, like, it's frightening. And then to hear about Tuskegee and like now they're by air and they're on the land, that's even more frightening. I'm like, does anybody elsewhere know? And here we are. This is what it looks like. This is code that makes sense. At least it does where I come from. It's true. It's true. It's actually the plot of this film, so we shouldn't say too much. Yeah, okay, no spoilers. Yeah. Uh, why don't you give me one? Um, as guardians prolong their lives by eating the golden apples of Idun, the Asgardians learned of this, uh, have learned of the apples in an article on Goof. <laughs> wow, I didn't know they had Goof. I don't know what a Goof is. <laughs> I do, yeah, but, yeah, I love those articles. How about this one? Thor's full name is actually Courtney Thorne Smith. <laughs> you know that? Can you believe it? Yeah, I got you. They're all fascinating. That's my Saved by the Bell reference. Just one for cheerleader. In this one, Thor has to get a job because he lost all of his money on Thor 8 NFT. No, it's, it's tough. There's a big measure. I don't really know what an NFT is, I'll be honest. It's a tough, it's a tough market right now. How about this one? Everyone knows Chris Hemsworth's brothers, Liam and Luke, but he also has a fourth brother named Clemsworth Hemsworth. He plays bass with the Jonas Brothers. Uh, Clemsworth, he's, uh, he's good. He's a guy. Talented, talented, talented guy. Why don't you give me one? Thor's hammer is named Mjolnir, his belt is named Mugang Yord, and his pecs are named Bert and Ernie. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. My thanks to Chris Hemsworth. His new movie, Thor, Love and Thunder, is out July 8th. Thank you, buddy. I was going to see it. So that's just tying in the ideal living. Linda and Lou got a card in the mail about a... Uh, retirement thing village that was being built and it offered a free weekend stay if you could get yourself there um, so I not having money for vacations decided and re being in real estate decided to go because I would rather go seek out and see if real white people still exist on the northeast coast, which we did. We drove there and there was like a whole room of like almost like retiree people. And I was like so amongst my element, which made me really happy for once that they weren't all gone. But I have no idea where their children inhabit. So that happened within driving distance. In fact, actually, it was Delaware something or other. Um, and I think the state had my initials for Nicole Kateruza, whatever. So we drove there. Um, we did that. I had my son with me. So I had I, I had a room full of eyewitnesses where we were the, we stuck out yet again because I went, we were the youngest of the group, but at least there were still elders somewhere. And they were able to obtain possibilities of ideal living in that room. Because I don't know who any of them were that attended. But we were there. I was there. Uh, by the way, that weekend, that's what the 1975 looks like. Because he attended with me. Um, at that point, he was on his best behavior. Um, not like when I took... Uh, I took him to Cape May. That was a total disaster. But there was a gaggle that followed me around um, because, again, and they mentioned they were Coast Guard, which was really nice to know that they were able to stay sober with me walking the streets of Cape May um, while the embarrassment was screaming, hooting, and hollering and making a real scene which is so embarrassing, but here we are. So it's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Kataruza. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken, and it's Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.